breathless silence. <laughs> Finally. Can you all hear me well? Yeah. Okay, that's good. I can hear myself too, so that helps. Um, in the next hour or so, and the next couple of days, much is coming your way. So I thought perhaps it would be wise to start indeed with silence, just for a minute or two. So imagine the silence will help us to you know, fine tune our hearing instruments so that we can take and give. Before I ask you to go into the silent mode, I will read a text. A text so kindly given to us and looked up by our treasurer, David Grossman. And it goes as follows. Tell one who had never seen water that there is an ocean of water and he must accept it on faith or reject it altogether. But let one drop fall upon his hand and he then has the fact from which all the rest may be inferred. After that, he could by degrees understand that the boundless and fathomless ocean of water existed. Blind fate would no longer be necessary. He would have supplanted it with knowledge. That was a wonderful silence. I've heard many silences before, but this one was <laughs> fantastic. I never thought you could be so silent. OK, uh, lots, of, lots of things are coming your way during this uh, next couple of days. But I just want all our foreign visitors to raise their right hand. Who comes from outside the Netherlands? Be honest. <laughs> OK, I have a piece of advice for you. You can put down your arms. As you probably know, the Dutch, that's us. Well, actually, I'm more Brazilian than Dutch now. But the Dutch are very formal people, right? They, they shake hands. And when they dance, they dance with a proper distance between the two partners. Not as in Brazil, because there they dance according to a theosophical principle. <laughs> that we are all one. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I just want you to know that when it comes to kissing, <laughs> the Dutch are pretty particular, because we kiss three times. Oh. All right, so in case you will meet up with a Dutch woman or a Dutch man, always ask, where do you start first? <laughs> OK, so normally you start on the left, and then you go to the right. And after that, you go to the left again. So um, since I cannot kiss all of you, I can try. But anyway, I just want to wish you welcome, welcome, welcome to the 17th annual gathering of international theosophy conferences. You came from a long distance. Linda Watts came all the way, well, from New Zealand via Birmingham. And now she is here, here in The Hague. We have the international vice president of the TSRDR who came all the way from Chennai. We have John Kniebel over there and many others. Uh, Olga, who came all the way from Crotona. And Jean, you came all the way from New Jersey. But what the heck? <laughs> anyway, um, we want to know that this is going to be a great occasion. And um, before we do anything else, I want you to give a hand of applause for all the people that have worked so hard to put this all together. All right. So 
Um, many years ago, um, there was a Dutch cabaret artist. And actually, when the Dutch talk about cabaret, it's not like the cabaret Jacques Manich is used to in Paris on the Place Pigalle or Le Moulin Rouge. Yeah. Actually, a Dutch cabaret artist would be more described as a stand-up comedian. Uh, his name was Paul van Vliet. Paul van Vliet. Uh, and years ago, he had a show which he in particularly had translated from Dutch into English for foreign visitors. During the summer months, he would do a lot of shows in uh, the La Mar Theater in Amsterdam, in Carré, and other places. And the show was entitled, The Truth, listen to this, The Truth Behind the Dikes. And you know, our country is protected by dunes and dikes. So let that title be an inspiration for us to tell each other during this gathering, and please help me to tell the truth the truth and nothing but, so help us our higher selves. OK, this is the 17th annual gathering of ITC. But I went into my memory banks, and I recall that 20 years ago, in the same city, a similar meeting took place. Of course, there were no international visitors. It was a gathering. Yeah, put together under the auspices of Johanna Vermeulen, uh, Herman Vermeulen, some people from, from the ADR organization. And I had just been a member for one year. And it was held during the 100th commemoration of the passing of William Judge. And that meeting took place here in The Hague. So even in 1995, theosophists would really try to come together and talk to one another. And as I said, I just had been a member for one year. So for me, this was all new. I had just become a vegetarian. I had stopped smoking, because that was a healthy lifestyle. And I went to that meeting, and I saw the people from the United Lodge of Theosophists on the one side. On the other side, there were people from the Point Loma organization. And in another corner, that was the Pasadena group. We had lecturers there. Perhaps you are aware of the Dutch scholar, Henk Spiedenburg, who gave a lot of talks. Ali Ritsema from the Dutch section gave talks. And there was a lady from the United Lodge of Theosophists. And I have to share this with you. Uh, Again, I had just been a member for one year, and I was watching all these people. And there came this woman, small as she was, standing up the podium. And she gave a talk which was so wonderful that I still remember her speaking and standing there. I understand that she is no longer with us. But I'm sure that if she looks over our shoulder, or from wherever she, are, she is right now, she would be very pleased that we've made it. It took us a couple of years, but we are here. Her name was Mien Poldervaart. Perhaps some of you remember the name. But anyway, I was there, and I was looking at these theosophists from the other organization. And as I said, I had just become a vegetarian. And, and then I saw someone else from another group ordering a ham sandwich. <laughs> so I thought, oh my goodness, that cannot be a theosophist. <laughs> But anyway, uh, that's a long time ago. Um, the man that I'm going to introduce to you now was there also. And I, he looked 20 years younger. <laughs> and at that time, he didn't have the nice jackets that he is wearing now. 20 years ago, he looked a little different. And, and I had just been a member for a year. And I just could not recall and remember what he looked like. But anyway, in the lobby of the place where it all took place, there was this huge portrait of William Judge. And it was really very impressive to see that. And I saw Hermann Vermeulen walking around there. And there was this woman, this lady, coming up to him. And she said, Mr. Vermeulen, you have 
put a wonderful, a wonderful session together, bringing all these theosophists together. But why did you put this huge portrait of yourself <laughs> here in the lobby? Well, we all know it was not the one she thought he was, but Hermann van Meulen was there. And it is indeed a great pleasure. And when I say a great pleasure that I'm able you know, to give the mic to a man that well, I think I've known him for five incarnations. <laughs> I don't know why, but it is just something when you meet a person, uh, a man of his um, uh, yeah, abilities and, and, and desire to bring all these various groups together, that it is only a great and fantastic pleasure to introduce him to you. Mr. Hermann Vermeulen, the leader of the Point Loma Blavatsky House Group. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that angry that lady was quite angry on me because she found me a little bit cocky. <laughs> so I was really innocent and I was so surprised. And he said, "What is the lady speaking about?" But okay, she points it out where the problem was. <laughs> of course, I have seen young kind in that time as well, but on that moment we were not coming that close. Now he is my Skype buddy for almost every day. And if you guys uh, re-elect us for another period to be in the board, I think we consider to buy ourselves an optical cable from Brazil to the Netherlands, <laughs> <laughs> because that works much better with uh, more and better quality. And uh, he's always in the morning having his coffee, five o'clock or something like that. I'm a little bit later because there is a distance between Brazil and the Netherlands. And then we have our talk in the morning, and then he comes up, of course, have you think about this, and what do you think about that, and why not doing this, etc., etc. And then you see that organizing a conference, get all the little things on his place, is quite a job. To be very honest with you, I think it was a half hour or an hour ago that we just fill in the application form for the next conference already. And if we don't do that, we miss a nice opportunity to be with you in Santa Barbara in a nice resource. And that resource is so popular that you need, really have to do your application now, otherwise you have no place. Santa Barbara is, is lovely, no point of discussion. Have nice beaches, so you can, I think, easily sleep outside. But I think for a conference it is much better that we have a proper place for you. So let's say a few words about what we think about now. I think having a conference with each other is very great. And over the years, I'm following the conferences of ITC. My first one started in 2007. We see that there is a type of progress in it. And believe it or not, over the years, we're coming now much closer with all the different mainstreams. And I hope that this conference will be a conference that we are speaking very openly about our background. So the next uh, item on the agenda will make some starts that gives people the opportunity to speak their mainstream. But in the coming days, we speak about how is your view from your background about a certain subject. And I think very openly, that is what we need. If we are not able to speak about our differences, there is no way to come more closer together and that we can learn from each other. We, ITC is not having the option that we like to merge all the traditions together. We like to learn the best from each other so that we are able to give it back. If you are coming home, you can say, okay, I have a good idea and so on, and to run out theosophy. Why? I think it is very simple. There is a great need in this world for theosophy. If you see all the problems around in the world, and you can think about uh, IS or ISIS, not to mix up with our ISIS foundations, we have dots in between, very important, yeah? But if you think about what happened in the world, there is a great need for understanding religion in the proper way, to be able to build a philosophy 
what give answer on our daily life problems, and we have to understand science in the right way, so that we can think along with them, and not only have to swallow what they think is true. So I think we are really looking for a great conference, and it is also a conference what needs activity from your side. Because we have our workshops, we like to exchange, we want to have the ideas, we want to learn from each other. Let's be open, let's speak about our differences, not that we have to emphasize it, but all traditions can learn something. One month ago, we were in Santa Barbara, we had a very great welcome from the ULT people over there. We had very lovely meetings, we had great contacts. And then I realized one thing, if you make personal contact with theosophies from different mainstreams, there is no problem. We just speak about theosophy, and of course we have different opinions, but there we can really learn from each other. So I hope we will work out a really great conference. And uh, at the end, I think we go home and we will bring a lot of energy and a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, ideas back to our own background. So. I hope that we will be successful if we are willing to be open and if we are willing to work hard with each other. Thank you very much. <laughs> An other person <laughs> what needs a re what has to be re-elected is Jean. He is our uh, president and he is always very busy. And he had special this year a lot of karma on his uh, plate. But still he was able to be in all the meetings and address us. Sometimes you have to speak with him four or half past four in the morning. Otherwise there was no opportunity during that day. But it works out very well. Sometimes he is missing a good internet connection. So maybe he is another candidate if he is re-elected for an optical cable. So he has straight connections with him. And he's a great guy with a lot of enthusiasm. So, Jean, the floor is yours. Inspire us. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, huh? Thank you. I, I, thank I, you. I, I <laughs> him. <laughs> oh, gosh, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, there's not much that I should have to say because I think my colleagues and my co-workers have said it very, very well, but let me say welcome. Um, this is the first time that I'm in this kind of a position, so I feel really, really awkward. But uh, once again, welcome to everyone that has come so far, uh, especially the delegates. And can I ask, is there anyone who has never been here before? By a show of hands. Okay. Well, let me say especially welcome, because every little drop helps build that ocean that we're trying to put together again. And when I say that, what goes through my mind is 140 years ago, when Madame Blavatsky came to share a message, there was no difference. There were just individuals that were interested and perhaps karmically aligned with what she had to say and were very willing to put everything else aside to come to an understanding of a teaching. What we're doing, at least in my mind, this year, last year, the last 17 years, and even with the seed, we have to mention of good old Willie Date, who just said, let's have a gathering, and brought folks together to share. What I see is old souls coming back, trying to reestablish a current, a current that involved impersonal work for the world. And in my mind, again, what we do over the next couple of days is work. As Herman said, we're trying to be honest and open and transparent about 
superficial differences, although I understand that there are individuals that feel deep differences do make an important distinction long term. But again, the main message was about universal brotherhood, was about altruistic work. And in that regards, hopefully we're trying to come back together to share first by understanding ourselves and our differences that are superficial in regards to those traditions and to reconnect with that deep center, that deep heart that is the common ground of all of us, that is the common ground of the teaching so that either directly or indirectly, the influence, the enthusiasm, the power of theosophy as a force in the world can be present in order to do its work. So on that note, I would say once again, I'm happy that everyone is here. I am very, very happy for the coworkers that have been working with us, the board members, the ancillary staff, everyone that's come together to put this meeting in place to allow the wonderfulness that will unfold over the next couple of days to happen. So again, thank you for that and thank you for coming and thank you for the work that you're about to do as well as the headaches that you're about to endure. Um, on that note, I think we should begin to turn it right over into the introduction from the um, speakers. We're going to have uh, Mr. Wes, Wes Ammerman from ULT first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Can I get this back? <laughs> I'd like to put it on. <laughs>